Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode five in the book of Second Peter. This is season 20. I'm going to call today more sure, more sure than personal experience. So Peter has this unusual relationship with the knowledge of his own death. He knows that it's coming and it's probably going to be violent. Uh, so what is unknown to most of us is clear to him. It's invisible to most of us, but for him, it's visible. He's saying, I'm dying soon. You got to listen to the stuff that I'm saying and then remember it. And today he's going to talk about the issue of the presence of the exposure to uh, cleverly devised myths. That's kind of the backdrop. That's the anti part of this. And then he's going to say, uh, we're going to have exposure to something that is much more reliable than uh, than that for sure, and then even much more reliable than exposure to personal experience. It's more sure, it's better, and it's the Bible, and it's the scripture. So what is it? It's not from people. It's a communication from God. And if it is really a communication from God, it changes everything. If it really does come via God, via his Holy Spirit, carrying uh, uh, a man in a particular way to write the stuff down, if this is true, if God really spoke and is speaking through his word, we'd best pay attention. Here it is. This is Second Peter, the book of Second Peter, chapter 1, and I'm going to start in verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when we when he received honor and glory from the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, quote, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And now he's going to talk about the Bible. And we have something more sure the prophetic word, to which you will, will do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So at issue today is the reliability of Scripture from Peter in his sort of last will and last word. It's written with urgency and fervor as he is carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the irony is, is at the moment of, of this writing where he's explaining to, to us how prophecy, that is communication with God, is written, he has experienced what prophets have been experiencing for millennia. And this prophetic word, he's saying, well, you can be sure of it. It's a lamp shining, shining. It's, it's God's word from there, from heaven, brought down from, from, to us. And it's not from one's own interpretation. It's not from the production of the will of man, but it is men speaking from God, carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now, here's his qualifications. He's talking about the transfiguration, which was a very real thing for Peter. He was both an eyewitness to it, he was an ear witness to it, and he was kind of a place witness uh, uh, to it. So his backdrop he was is he lived, walked, and was with Jesus for three years. He was witness to the crucifixion. In a sense, he was a participant and a cause of the suffering of Christ. He was sort of an inner circle of one of his more intimate friends. And he, he compares what we have, the Bible, to the transfiguration. And he says, I was there. I heard this. I heard the voice of the Father born to him by the majestic glory in this transportation me method where there's this pipeline of earshot from heaven down down to uh, down to mankind. I hear the Father say to the Son in this Trinitarian love fest, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. So I was there. I heard it. I saw it. And then he says this, 
we have something more sure. That's the big point here today. It's more reliable. It means valid, solid, known to be true. We have something more solid than this experience, this eyewitness, this personal experience that I have. And what is it? It's the Bible. So let's argue for a moment that this isn't true. What are the implications if the if the Bible isn't true? If God did not communicate accurately, or let's say that maybe he doesn't exist at all, we could draw that conclusion, or he doesn't care uh, about the, the people that he created. But if the Bible is inaccurate, then it's not authoritative. And if it's not authoritative, then you don't have to obey it, and you can do what you want. Or what, he's, what Peter is saying is he cares. He cares enough to establish communication. At the transfiguration, he does it by uh, this bearing of a word from the majestic glory. And now, for us here today, in, in our modern time, how does he do it? He does it through the Bible, through Scripture, through God's communication. So it's men speaking the very word of God, but not from their own wills. It's spoken from God as they are carried along by the Holy Spirit. So like Jesus... We have this communication born by the majestic glory in the sense, or at least this prophecy mechanism, men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And so what? Here it is, verse 19. We have something more sure, the prophetic word. And then, so wow, we have this prophetic word. Now what? Well, he tells us, to which you will do well to pay attention. So I appreciate you being here today uh, for these seven minutes in this podcast. I appreciate the attention that you, you are giving at this moment to the process that is described in the word today. Thank you for paying attention. Come back tomorrow and pay some more.